Um, it's time now for our second speaker, and we're heading over to Berlin to meet the photographer, filmmaker, and artist David Uzochukwu. His work investigates ideas of strength, masculinity, resilience, longing, and belonging, with these explorations often tackled through surreal and digitally reconfigured landscapes and characters. On top of his photography work, he's also just written and directed his first short film. So today we're going to be discussing with David how he crafts fantastical stories and how he works with his subjects to create narratives that will later be finished digitally. Um, hi, David. How are you? I think you might be on mute. <laughs> Can't hear you just yet. It's been like literally one pandemic later and still starting things on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, no, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. I'm very, very excited to, to speak with you. Um, as per our kind of new look, nicer Tuesdays, so you're not going to be giving a talk this evening, but instead I get to ask you lots of questions and so does our audience. Um, so just another reminder to anyone at home, if a question comes up, uh, comes to mind, pop it in the chat next to your stream and I'll do my best to ask David before our time is up. Um, but first off, David, I wanted to ask you about how you got into photography, because I watched an interview the other day with you as a 15 year old. I think it was your first ever filmed interview. Um, how did you get into photography at such an early age? That, you know, that, that was about a photography kind of project. So, yeah. How did you get into it so early? Yeah. Um, funnily enough, uh, I only very recently remembered how it happened exactly. Um, so I never had, uh, I don't have any artists in my family. Um, but I was just lucky enough to develop a crush on someone who was into photography and then I kind of just absorbed their hobby. Um, <laughs> and somehow it aligned with um, things I'd been interested in before and just like collecting small pretty things and um, sketching and dancing and um, yeah, surprisingly enough it was a medium that allowed me to kind of uh, combine all of the things that I had been drawn to before. Um, Exactly. And then over time, it just it just it grew from shooting on a phone for two years over smaller cameras to um, committing more and more of my lifetime to it. Amazing. Yeah, no, it's a, it's lots of great things come from those those early teenage crushes, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I think one of the first things that maybe people will remember you worked on was it was a Nike campaign with FK Twigs. And again, I think you were only 17 at the time. Um, how much of a defining moment was that for you in terms of your development as a photographer, but also, I guess, for your, you know, your recognition, your public profile as well? Yeah, um, I mean, it was uh, it was a major moment. Um, I didn't feel as though it was um, a big moment for my development, really. I felt like um, I was I was ready. I was up for it. I was just really excited to be able to work with someone um, who I so deeply respect. Um, and to get that opportunity. And I do think that it was a really huge door opener um, just because of the amount of recognition that is, or that we do tie to um, both large profile artists and work for big brands. Um, yeah. Definitely, yeah, it had that, that kind of star quality, I guess. But um, yeah, I totally understand what you mean when it's, it wasn't necessarily about the, your development as a photographer. You know, I think your, your skills are already there before that. Um, I mean, we're going to be seeing lots of your images up on screen um, while we're talking. And I guess it's very clear, like over the years, you've you developed this style of photography that's really kind of otherworldly and surreal. Um, you know, thinking about it with, with kind of these protagonists who are both human, but also non-human at the same time. And the worlds that they're inhabiting, they're kind of, they could be Earth, but they also could be a foreign planet. Um, what is it about those kinds of images that's kind of always fascinated you? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, first of all, I have always, I mean, before I started doing photography, I was, I was reading a lot and um, escaping a lot uh, and reading a lot of fantasy. Um, and I think it does both stem from a place where I'm just um, a lot of the time not super interested in a lot of things that surround me in the sense that I'm not so interested in a lot of like pre-shaped things um, and I feel like a lot of our you know close environment but also society um, you know just has been shaped by others and so um, maybe creating things that aren't necessarily um, 
linked to our everyday life that feel different, that feel like a breath of, of, of fresh air are just that for me during the process of creation. It's kind of like holding on to like all these tiny bits and pieces during your um, everyday that make you feel alive and trying to stretch them and extend them and bath in them. Um, so, yeah, I think in a way it's a lot about um, control over the over your own every day, some sort of freedom and um, the interest in, in actively choosing how you want to see the world and what you want to focus on and um, what you want to see. That's a beautiful way of putting it, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like a couple of the images that we've just seen on screen are a really good example of this. I'm keen to hear about your, your process. Um, one of the images that we just saw, you know, it's, it's a man in the shallows of an ocean, there's kind of spines or fins running up um, his back. How do you go about making that image? I mean, what was the process that went into that? Is it mostly a digital process? Is it mostly an analog process? Um, yeah, keen to hear what that what that kind of looks like. Yeah, um, I mean, there's not one process per se, um, but a lot of the time um, I sketch everything out beforehand. So I know pretty much what image I at least you know want to aim for. Um, also because it's just otherwise I would just during shooting especially if other people are involved or just be freaking out trying to be like okay what is it that i wanted and how do i need them to put their hands um and so yeah things are sketched out beforehand and then i try to um i'm on like there are actually two images i think two images i think of when I describe it like that um is it the one with like wait is it the one with like two people kind of slumped over each other or is it the one with one character alone in the sea the the one with one character alone in the sea is the one I was thinking of, yeah. Okay. Okay, lovely. I mean, for that one, um, I shot, I mean, um, there's a lot, I'm, I try to shoot as much as I can um, in camera. A lot of times there are just very, you know, limitations, um, limitations that, that you're confronted with. Um, so for that one, obviously, I couldn't find anyone with a... Um, like dorsal, like with a with a fin. So I needed to shoot some plates of um, of fish. I um, needed to. I waded out into the ocean um, and shot the character right there in the sea. But then also the background of the image is actually stems from um, landscapes that I shot while traveling elsewhere. So it really depends how much of an image I can. You know, as much of it as I can make happen in camera, I do. Um, but then a lot of times I also don't necessarily bother. Like it's about like what 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 is what's the least effort? How am I going to get my image the most efficiently? And how am I um, most surely going to get the image that I want? And a lot of the time that means that it's going to come together in post production anyway, or be stripped from any. Um, anything that reminds us of like modern society or um, yeah so it's it's very much a um, one large it, it, the, the parts of the process that are analog and they're digital they kind of fuse um, yeah really interesting and I'm also really interested that you you start your process with a uh, kind of with a sketch is that is that literally with a with a sketchbook kind of drawing these bodies and what they might have as kind of um, attached to them or on top of them? Absolutely, yeah, totally. Um, I have sketchbooks filled with ideas. Um, but it's also, it's really interesting. Um, they stick with me for years. It's just literally seeing very much and then trying to somehow go for it. And sometimes, you know, when you don't get there, which is worse, you try again, reshoot it three, four times. Or sometimes you're lucky and um, something nicer happens or something that, yeah, in a way you can't control it either way. Um, yeah, but there's always definitely at least uh, a pretty precise uh, guideline of, of where I'd like to be at the end of the shoot. That's so interesting. I, I find it fascinating because some, some photographers will say, you know, they really they kind of think and they have their imagination comes through the camera, you know, they'll, they'll need to shoot a lot before they get the idea. Um, whereas you starting with a sketchbook and a blank page is, is such an interesting part of the process. I do think that in a way, um, it's also a downside to the process. And it means that I mean, it needs a lot of um, practice, and it needs like me shooting a lot in order to 
kind of leave room for for improvement and leave room for um, just yeah luck to kind of play play its role um, yeah because I think it can be really easy to um, kind of rest sit with these ideas that you've been sitting on for for years and not really push them any further or, or stop questioning them but then again also maybe the reason why you're sitting with them for years is that they're like not quite ready to be made yet um, and even after shooting sometimes images like the one with the with the fin I think that one if I had it in a folder on my computer for at least three years um, just because sometimes things wow. take time to come together how you want that's an amazing kind of yeah insight into how much patience you need and how much kind of yeah how much development these ideas require and um, I wanted to kind of pick you up on one other thing you mentioned there. You said you don't want any kind of signs of modern society in your imagery. Um, I mean, is that something that's in the back of your mind when you're when you're making this work? Is kind of tapping into something a bit more primordial or a bit more? I mean, obviously these are very natural environments and um, they're kind of natural shapes as well. Um, yeah, are you trying to kind of, I guess, get away, escape modern society by finding something a bit more primordial, maybe? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm wondering if I would say, um, I mean, in a way, yes, I think that's, that's the spirit. I'm wondering if primordial is the word I'd use, because I feel like um, it's not necessarily about going um, back to some like presupposed space, um, but more about just visualizing something that is, is already there and is like almost a parallel plane, um, mm -hmm. not visualizing um, feelings and for some reason for me that rarely includes like um yeah the things that i'm surrounded with every day um but it's hard to put it's hard to put into words um yeah and also i appreciate yeah i've, I've put words in your mouth there i'm sure they're <laughs> not necessarily no 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 no, right no, but <laughs> no 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 but it's, it's it's no it's exciting it's just um i'm realizing i'm learning a lot about how it's potentially charged like the idea of of nature and wilderness um as opposed to as opposed to culture um and how the idea of nature can be used in order to um you know in dangerous ways to to kind of because because it is used to it is used to to degrade or um to kind of draw borders between nature and culture that are somehow violent um so that's yeah stuff that i kind of think about um occasionally. Very interesting. Um, I'm keen to hear how you now divide your time between, you know, personal work and the maybe more commercial editorial shoots. Um, is it relatively flexible or do you kind of, will you go months at a time only working on, you know, a personal project or only working on editorial and commercial shoots? Yeah. Um, sometimes, I mean, it, de it depends. I do try to, I do try to balance it when I take on commercial work. Um, I mean, for the last two years, I've done my only personal work um, and been very focused on like developing one particular series of these um, these black mermaids. Um, but I do feel like it's it's slightly overwhelming to try to just balance it all and and do it all at the same time. So um, a lot of times when I'm investing in you know investing my energy and and my force into commercial projects um I, I just don't have the the capacity to keep doing personal work um which can be really sad um but also it's just like a a, a reality that i wanted to make transparent and share because i know also some people feel um feel like they can balance it and then <laughs> um i know in the past i've, I've had moments where i'm like why you know um, <laughs> why am i unable to just do it all all the time um, yeah. but they require i think such different head spaces quite a lot of the time um you know apart from just time and effort and <laughs> you know not not sleeping but it requires such a different you know mind frame to get yourself into to, to create those different types of work i think yeah i do think there's some sort of um i do think there's a difference and um for the longest time i was trying to um pretend that there wasn't or or act like there wasn't or um but there's just so much 
there's a lot of collaboration and you really need to um, sit with other people and breathe with, with them and um, align your ideas. And that just takes a lot of energy to like get on the right, the exactly right like wavelength. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. totally it's also agree. super exciting. Um, yeah. Definitely. I have to say as well, you're, you're, I think you've got to be one of the few photographers out there who's also a student of philosophy. I think you're still studying, are you? Or have you now finished that, that degree? <laughs> no, I'm going to study forever. Um, I am <laughs> studying. <so. laughs> um, how, did, how did that kind of the academic studies and the kind of thinking about philosophy on the one hand, how does that influence then your, your photography, the work you make with camera in hand? Mm -hmm. Um. I think that, it, in a way, I mean, it structures, you know, it structures my thoughts, um, and it helps me. I do think that it helps in the moments before I take the camera in hand. Um, it helps with figuring out what it is that I want to do, um, why I want to do it, um, finding ideas for for new series. But then it also helps afterwards, and it helps um, and kind of you know, after the images have been made um, and categorizing them and then finding like red threads and um, yeah, just kind of making sense of them in a way that is separate from the intuition and gut feeling um, that I think you need in the moment that you make the work. Um, yeah. Interesting. So there's almost like two speeds that you're, so when you're creating the work, there's like a whole set of kind of speeds and feelings around that. And then you need to have the more reflective, slower process afterwards. Yeah, because I think there's so many layers to it. I mean, there's the conceptual layer beforehand, and then there's a very, um, I mean, not necessarily, I mean, there's, then there's the technical aspect of just making good images happen or of making good films happen. Um, and then you kind of need to bring it all into context again. Um, yeah, but definitely sort of, yeah, for me, I think these are definitely phases. I'm trying to do it all at the same time. It's, it's just going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that's, that's, that's pretty challenging. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, you just wrote and directed your first short film um, called Goethe Demerung. I think I've said that right in, in the German. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Um, no, can you beautiful. tell us a little bit about the film? <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about the film and, and yeah, I guess why you wanted to make it as well? Yeah, um, no, I'm super excited to make it. Um, I co-directed it actually with Farah Shariat. And um, we found, we came across the... So wait, let me start earlier. Um, so Götter Dämmerung is, is, I mean, as word it's German, it means um, dusk of the gods. Um, so it's the age or the period in which gods die. Um, and so we came across a, um, a, a short film competition about that was asking for short films about Europe. And um, we were brainstorming about what are the images that come to mind when you think about Europe. Um, and the first and most, yeah, the first thing where without question, all these images that we have of people drowning and, and being made to drown on our shores or in our waters. Um, and we somehow wanted to make that pain visible and, and kind of thought, how could we, how could we do that in a way that wouldn't exploit the bodies um, of these people who are, who have suffering and have died um, the way that these more documentary images do. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to find a way for this pain to sort of capsize the lives of, of, of Europeans that usually aren't affected by it, by it. Um, and so we wanted to make a short film about a community of Europeans who go out into the Mediterranean Sea to have a burial um, and then their ship crashes. Um, and these yeah, are, but it's still, I think you, yes. sorry, I was going to say that they're, they're described on your, um, I've only seen the trailer on, on your website, but they're described as a kind of wealthy community. So it's, it's almost flipping on, on its head, the, um, the, the images that we normally see from the refugee crisis, I guess. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it, it was really interesting playing with like ideas of, of luxury and it almost feeling like an, um, like a commercial shoot, um, on some, in some moments and having, yeah, 
like the violence of that while thinking about what it actually was that we were trying to talk about talk about or speak of um that was present within the shoot so that was yeah it's it's super interesting um but yeah it's still doing its little festival run um i'm hoping to be able to share it very soon great yeah i saw it was 2021's the the festival circuit <laughs> year for it and then um, <laughs> yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing it <laughs> at some point um We've actually had a question come through from Valentina in the audience, which is going back to I think it's one of the images that we've we've been seeing in the in the slideshow. Um, it is from that uh, FK Twigs shoot. Um, she, Valentina is wondering how you achieved that kind of that look. Was it using lots kind of a couple of mirrors, or is it editing the angles together in post production? Mm. Um, it was mirrors. It was mirrors. Um, it was just very fun, and I'm just putting up these little mirrors for twigs to just poke her head through. Um, but it was it was based on an image that I'd made of my sister a few months earlier in um, our garden. And so I thought it was very fun with, you know, how um, processes that you just develop um, on such a small scale through experimentation and through, um, I mean, you know, it's not a crazy setup, um, but how they can just be applied um to to other contexts it was kind of it was, it was cute it was a really nice moment having the image of my sister in mind poking her head through but it's this artist that you love yeah. <laughs> yeah it's brilliant it's such a clever thing i mean yeah as you said it's like it's not the biggest setup it's very simple but um yeah it creates an image that's really unusual actually yeah at the end of it um yeah. the other thing i wanted to talk it's to you about which is something else you've Oh, sorry, please go on. No, no, sorry. It was, I was just about to say that it's actually kind of fun to um, just be able to trust in that experimentation that you, that, that you do and in those processes and just being able to trust in your ideas and, and just never mind the context that you're in. Like, in a way, I think that's just something I wanted to also put out there, that it's really exciting and that you're capable. Um, and in a way, that connects to whether to your question from before um, of how I felt the job impacted me because it's just literally an application of techniques that you have already, that you carry within you. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Valentina, for that, for that question. Um, yeah, I wanted to come on to something else that's coming up for you, which is uh, you're about to start showing in Arles as part of the, the show, The New Black Vanguard, which is, I think, based on the book that's edited by Antoine Sargent. Um, what work are you showing there and, and how does it connect with the rest of the work that's been curated for the show? Do you know, or is it still being kind of decided? Mm. I think it's early July, isn't it? Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's early July. Um, I'm super excited to show that. Um, actually I don't, I mean, there's been an American chapter of the show and there's, they're expanding to this European one and I'm not sure what work they're adding, um, apart from, the one high fashion image that um, I'm contributing, but where I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to share which image it is, but I think it's going to be really cute. And um, I'm sure that, I mean, it's super exciting to be in the company of everyone um, who is exhibiting. It's a huge show. And I think it's really nice to just, yeah, have all these black kids mm, making fashion work. Which is so I mean, that, that's... and frivolous and yeah, fantastical. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what that that book is. Yeah, all about, isn't it? Um, and I guess for you, what's what are you most excited about when you look at that kind of current crop of of young black photographers that's that's currently emerging? I mean, you know, there's there's much older names in that in that book alongside some very young ones. But um, yeah, what, what I guess what what makes you excited when you think about that that group? Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Um, I was thinking a lot about about the the younger ones, and um, but I think I mean it's going to sound very serious and, and like slightly glum, but I think it's um, in a way exciting. Um, I mean, I'm excited by this willingness to question their own work, or by how intricately um, maybe ethics are are tied into it. Um, a lot of the time, I feel like photography having been you know, its short span of existence, um, it's 
like being conscious of its of its potentials and its impacts and its world shifting um, abilities is, is super nice. And I feel like especially a lot of young photographers um, whose work I, I I follow um, are super conscious of that and make it like the core of their work. Questions of what do I want to be putting out there? What is my responsibility as a photographer and artist? Um, in a way that, yeah, maybe historically we haven't always seen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that's such a such an important part of so much of the work that's yeah in that book, but also I guess elsewhere that we're seeing at the moment, which is yeah hugely exciting. Um, David, I'm I'm sorry. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. I think we've just about run out of time. But thank you, thank you so much for yeah first of all showing your work and then talking about it um, yeah with me. It's been it's been fascinating. Thanks for having me.